new musical group makes its vow tonight in Wistful Vista, the Businessmen's Symphony Orchestra. And if you think symphony lovers aren't going to get the business, look who's writing special music for it. As we join Fibber McGee and Molly. Write that in for the French horns. McGee. Now we'll use a fortissimo, or maybe even a fivetissimo. <laughs> it's a big orchestra. Beethoven. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't see you standing there, my dear. I was engrossed. When one is preparing to conduct the symphony tonight, one cannot allow oneself to get myself upset. <laughs> Say, how did you ever get to be conductor of this orchestra anyway? Did you draw straws for it? <laughs> Not at all, my dear. It's a matter of simple merit. When all us guys got together to form the Businessmen's Symphony, I was the only guy in the bunch that couldn't play some kind of an instrument, so naturally I got chose conductor. Well, that's very intelligent. Yep. That's like making a man an admiral because he's the only one who can't run a ship, huh? Well, I, I always have been pretty musical, you know, kiddo. You remember back in Peoria when I wrote the class song for the old Peoria Union High School? Ah, oh, yes. Oh, old Peoria Union. Yeah. What was the name of that song? Think of me when you think of old P.U. <laughs> well, I have work to do, my dear. Now, let's see. Now, if anyone tell a call, tell them the maestro is composing. Yeah. Tell them that. I'll get it, Maestro. You compose. Okay. Oh, uh, hello, Molly. How are you? Fine, Dr. Gamble. But let's talk softly, please. Somebody sick? I'll call a doctor and we'll... No, no, doctor. But the Maestro is composing. Oh. Call a doctor anyhow. I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear you come in, uh, doctor. Wrapped up in my work, you know. Yes. I'm sorry to have disturbed you, Ratro. What did you call him, Dr. Ratro? That's a large maestro, Molly. <laughs> well, that's very amusing, Doctor, but I must get on with my new composition. Now, let's see. For my debut as conductor of the Businessmen's Symphony, I'm composing the Tennessee Waltz. I see. <laughs> well, this may come as a shock to you, Middlesone. But somebody has already composed the Tennessee Waltz, and good, too. Well, I'm decomposing. <laughs> I'm breaking it down for a 40-piece orchestra. I'll write in a part for you if you just say that. Say, I didn't know you were musical, Doctor. Uh, what instrument do you play? Well, I play several instruments, Molly, equally well. The cymbals, the triangle, chimes, and I play a very hot surgical saw. <laughs> <laughs> He started out playing the tuba originally, Molly. Oh, he did? Oh, you should have saw him. What a ham. <laughs> so scared people wouldn't know he was a musician, which he ain't. He used to put on his tuba before he left home and wear it all evening. <laughs> that, I realize now, was a mistake. Sure well, was. what happened, Doctor? <laughs> people keep throwing lighted firecrackers into it? No, but I ate too many hamburgers on the way home one night and got stuck in it. <laughs> I ruined a $300 tuba sawing it off of me. Well, I'll see you at the Elks tonight, McGee. About seven, Doctor. <laughs> see, how many uh, musicians will you have in this orchestra tonight, McGee? Are you writing enough parts there for everybody? Well, I hope so, kiddo, but you never can tell with the Businessmen's Symphony. The first week we had it, there was over 40 guys showed up. That was the night we had the free root beer. <laughs> but last week, there was a night ball game, and only four guys came to symphony practice. Only four? Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all the wrong guys, too. You can't get much music out of three cymbals and a sweet potato. <laughs> well, what did you do? Oh, I wasn't there. I went to the ball game. I <laughs> Well, back to my music. So, now, if people quit interrupting me so I can concentrate, I'll get this thing Now, me. I'll protect you, dearie. I won't let a soul bother you. Good. <laughs> Uncle Dennis joined an orchestra one time. Remember that? Mm-hmm. 
I'll put in a trombone here. Right on top of his first sheet of music, it said, take a five-bar rest. Mm -hmm. Well, he started down Oak Street and took a rest in three of them. <laughs> but he fell sound asleep in the fourth bar, and they had the dragging Molly. home of a... <laughs> Please, I gotta finish this music, and I can't... Hey, Johnny, I'm collecting fun! Oh, hi, old-timer. Care to donate a dollar to a girl scamp? No, I know. Or I... would you rather have me tell everybody you're too stingy? Huh? I'll spit it around that you're the tightest. Oh, mm. all right, all right, all right. Anything to get a little quiet around here. I'm trying to write some music. Here, here's a buck. Thank you, son. You're one of nature's noblemen. <laughs> Skip it. Where is this girl's camp, Mr. Oldtimer? In the mountains? No, she's waiting outside, daughter. I'm going to buy her a soda. Ah, uh, who? Bessie, my little girl scamp. Oh. <laughs> she's the scamp that thought this up, Johnny. Yeah. Well... So long, nobleman. That rat, lock that door, will you, Molly, before somebody else busts in here and starts interrupting you me. You say you're writing some music, Johnny? Yes, Mr. Oldtimer, for the concert tonight at the Elks. Well, write me a part, Johnny. I'll be there. I do bugle calls, you know. Oh, you ain't a member of the Businessmen's Symphony, and you know it. Do you have a bugle, Mr. Oldtimer? A bugle? Sharks, daughter, anybody can do bugle calls with a bugle. I do it the hard way. <laughs> well, I gotta get busy. I gotta get this arrangement finished and practice my singing. You're singing? Oh, didn't I tell you? I'm closing the concert with the vocal arrangement I wrote myself. The King's Men are helping me sing it. Helping you? Mm hmm. That's a little like Rembrandt helping you paint the pants, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I almost got this now, kiddo. Let's see if get a this is the part here where I throw a derby hat over the cornet, cut out the fiddles, and bring in the tin section. You mean the brass section, don't you? Government restrictions, kiddo. <laughs> Ain't allowed to use brass. Anyhow, with the derby hat over the cornet, we mute the flute, see? Yes. Because a soft toot with a muted flute is a beaut of a toot. <laughs> and the mute on the flute is cute to boot if you give a hoot for flute mutes. <laughs> But the mute has to suit the flute to mute to toot to toot that suits the flute. McGee. Yeah? Draw a derby over that one, too, will you? And come on, let's get Jack. Get some more chairs on the stage here, boy. You know, dearie, I just love being backstage. You'll love it even more when you see your husband out there taking bows tonight, Tootsie. Maestro McGee rocks the music world with his sensational conduction of his own arrangement. Hey, uh, McGee, uh, give me the wrong music. I play piccolo. This sheet says kettle drum. Oh, I meant to tell you, Bert. The guy that plays the kettles couldn't make it tonight, but two guys turned up with piccolo. Oh, I, I know. So but... just scratch out kettle drum on there and write in piccolo. Okay, any other questions? Oh, I don't know. I'll try it. <laughs> Heavenly days. You make everything so simple, dear. Well, there's nothing complicated when you understand. Uh, what's the matter, Latrivia? Did you get your music? Uh, yes, I think this is it, McGee, but I'm a little... Uh, don't you understand it, Mr. Mayor? Well, no, not exactly. Oh? Uh, here, McGee. Uh -huh. On top of the page here, it says S-E-X. What does that mean? Well, that's an odd question. S-E-X. Well, that's saxophone, Latrivia. <laughs> I had to abbreviate. That's what you play, in it? Saxophone? Yes. <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, yes, yes. Oh. Uh, here, in the middle of these notes, it says, Pick. What does that mean? Why? Pixicato, naturally. Gosh, don't you know anything about music, Latrivia? Pixicato is where you pick it. <laughs> With a saxophone? 
that's something you do with a violin, isn't no, it? Well, let him borrow on. My gosh, I can't do everything for these guys. <laughs> I only write the music, Homer. Uh, Playing it is your problem. <laughs> problem is a very gentle word. <laughs> better get in the corner and talk to <laughs> Oh, excuse me, sir. Are you Mr. McGee? That's me, bud. The maestro. Why? I, sir, am your piccolo player. Oh? My brother-in-law couldn't make it tonight, so he sent me along to play for him. Well, isn't well, that thoughtful, McGee? Yeah, good. Well, here's your music, bud. Oh, you got your piccolo, I see. Yeah. Sir. Any questions? Uh, just one, sir. Shoot. Which end of this thing do I put in my mouth? <laughs> For goodness sakes, the end you blow on, naturally. No, oh, of course. I'm such an ox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, George. Grab your music off of the piano there. What does he play? Cymbals. Boy, this... Hey, hey, Ole, I told you to get some more chairs up here for the orchestra. Come on, boy, snap into it, Ole. Let's look, my boys. Huh. Could I make a small suggestion? I'd like to suggest something you could do. Okay. What is the suggestion, Ollie? Is that, uh, oh, I didn't see you standing there, man. <laughs> you skip it, Mickey. I don't use language like that in front of ladies. <laughs> well, come on, boy. Let's get moving. Let's get out. If you were in such a hurry, McGee, why don't you rest the mouth of Ireland and give some other muscles a chance? Huh? I used to get paid to be janitor for Elks, McGee. When I do work for Monkey Business Symphony, I'm just donating my time. <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz, I'm trying to run everything by myself, but nobody... Coffee, anybody? Who wants a cup of coffee? Yeah, coffee. I do. Boy, I do, guy. Junior. Here, hello. <laughs> Say, Mr. Wilcox, that's very thoughtful of you to do this. Hi, Molly. Hello, Maestro. Hello, son. Well, I thought everybody could use a pickup before we go out there and face the critics tonight. You said it, Junior. When I mount that podium and face that audience with my back. And you know, this, uh, there's nothing like a cup of coffee with good, rich pet milk in it to brighten things up. Help yourself, fellas, and put plenty of that pet into it. Ask me that picture, McGee. Thanks. Your treat, Mr. Wilcox? Molly, it's everybody's treat when you serve pet milk in your coffee. Look at that beautiful creamy color. Mm-hmm. Taste that rich, full-bodied flavor. Ah, pet evaporated milk. Hey, it's Amo, fine... grab your music there, boy. What yeah. does he play, McGee? Symbols. <laughs> like I say, smart housewives know that pet milk is not only delicious in coffee, but it adds extra goodness to their cooking, too. Favorite family dishes cooked with pet milk. You hey, see. Carl. They're better than Carl. There's your music on the piano, Carl. What does he play? Cymbals. <laughs> I say, uh, cooked with pet milk, your favorite dishes are extra tasty and extra nourishing. Makes a big hit with the family. And uh, pet's easy on the budget, too, because... Hey, Doc, uh, yeah. you've been practicing? Yep. You know your part okay? Perfectly, McGee. I memorized What it. are you playing tonight, Doctor? Symbols. <laughs> and uh, as I say, pet milk costs less generally than any other form I'm of gonna milk. I'm going to murder him tonight, Doc. I predict this night will go down in musical history. No comment. Oh. <laughs> it, uh... Costs less than half as much as cream. Hey, is anybody listening to me? Anybody at all? Well, if they aren't, Mr. Wilcox, we're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> you better go practice your music a little, Junior. We'll be starting any minute now. Okay. Boy, oh boy, what a night this is going to be. Well, how do I look, Molly? I look like a maestro. Is my hair messed up enough? My hair? No, oh, it's perfect, dearie. Ah. Looks like you'd been asleep standing on your head in the wind tunnel. Good. <laughs> how do I look from the back? That's how the audience will see me. Now, how do I look from the back? Lumpy. Oh. What have you got in your hip pockets? Nothing. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> Boy, I'm nervous. All us maestros get nervous. Oh, hi, Wimp. Hello, folks. Hello, Mr. Wimple. I didn't know you were in this orchestra. What do you play, the cymbals? I should say not. This is my instrument right here. I play the bass fiddle. Oh. <laughs> well, how nice. Do you like it? Oh, I love that fiddle, Mrs. McGee. I've even named it for my wife. You mean? Yes. Sweetie Face, my big old bass fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> we 
believe me when I go out there tonight, I'll really slap that bass. <laughs> Grab your music off the piano there, Wimp, and let's get... Could I please play just a little bitty solo, Mr. Oh. McGee? Right in the middle of the number. I've been practicing... No, no, no. The music's already wrote, Wimp, and we Please, just... Mr. McGee. No. Please, maestro. No. I worked so hard. No. Hiding in the attic with my bass fiddle when Sweetie Face was out. Working and slaving just one little bitty... Oh, solo. Mr. Wimple, well, get up off your knees. <laughs> You're bagging your slacks. No, I'm bagging Mr. McGee to let me play. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you can solo him. Now get up. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Take your music and write solo across it. Oh, thank you, sir. That thank rat you. at that. Stop kissing my hand. <laughs> Go practice. Heavenly days, your musicians take it big, don't they? How can he solo without changing the music? Look, Tootsie, all I want to do is keep everybody happy. I already promised eight guys they can play a solo. The only thing they don't know is they're all going to play solo at once. <laughs> Come on, McGee. We're ready to start. Okay. Well, good luck, dearie. Now, keep your fingers crossed, kiddo. Now, this is it. All right, men. Quiet, please. Now, before the curtain opens, a few last words from your maestro. Last words is a nice choice, McGee. <laughs> you men have a great privilege tonight. You're about to play under one of the great undiscovered personalities of the musical world. Me. <laughs> Who said that? Sorry, McGee. I sneezed into my saxophone. Well, watch it, boy. Now, you know, men, you men know what you're doing. The Tennessee Waltz. I wrote it all out for you. Remember now, no hot foots during the number. Every man play from his own music. And don't stand up in front of the trombones. <laughs> Turn. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, listen to that mob, Molly. They love me. I'm not so sure. Here, sit down over here. I got no time to sit down now, kiddo. I got to get ready for my solo with the King's Men. Well, how was it, Latrivia? How was that Tennessee waltz? Sensational, huh? If that was the Tennessee waltz, McGee, we must have taken the wrong turn at Nashville. <laughs> Yes, if he's a conductor, we need a brakeman. That open switch we hit back here. Oh, <laughs> help me get ready, everybody. Get me out of this shirt, Doc. Hand me a dry shirt, Molly. Oh, thanks. Heavenly days, you're ringing wet, oh, McGee. It's a very emotional experience, my dear. Very accelerating. I really gave my all. <laughs> and you had so little to start with. <laughs> Very well, myself. I especially like the part where you pressed a button and the baton lit up. <laughs> Doctor, you missed uh, three beats when that happened. Yes, I was a bit taken aback. Oh, come on. Come on. Give me some more makeup, Molly. Powder my nose, will you? It shines in my eyes. Powder his head, too. Hold still, dearie. Grab the atomizer there, Latrivia. Spray my throat while I button my shirt, will you? I'd let Doc do it, but he charges three bucks. 
Go ahead, spray my throat. Well, all right. No, no, Mr. Mayor, the inside of his throat. Yeah. Open your mouth, McGee. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> me, 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 me. What, uh, what are you going to sing, Caruso? It's a special arrangement, Doc. I was going to sing something operatic like Barker Rolls from Tales of Huffman or... <laughs> Maybe Gardner's Moonlight Sinatra. <laughs> oh, I, I like that last one. That's a good one. Yeah, but they never... <laughs> they never finished them songs. They didn't write any words to them. Hand me my necktie, Doc. Thanks. Boy, if they think that orchestra was good, wait till they... <laughs> huh? They think it is good, he says. I got a little present for you, McGee. Huh? Look what I took away from three fellas in the balcony. Oh, my gosh, they even brought me gifts, Molly. Look, fresh vegetables. <laughs> Tomatoes. They all look very fresh. Gee, this touches me, fellas. You know that? This really hits me. Yes, I'm afraid that's what they had in mind, dearie. <laughs> this is like the old barnstorming days when people used to pay admission with farm products. Just goes to show you that the people, the common people, are eager for fine music. Yes, or target practice. <laughs> and I'll take the music to them. I'll take the symphony on the road. I'll play the small town. Yeah, they got plenty of tomatoes in the small towns. <laughs> hey, listen. Oh, it's the King's men. They're on stage, dearie. Uh, walk to the curtain with me, Molly. My public is waiting. This, my dear, is my finest hour. Sweet Genevieve. <laughs> the Pet Milk Company, and to NBC for the use of the hall each week. 
and our grateful thanks to all our friends who have let us visit their homes each Tuesday night. I hope we have been pleasant guests. Me too. And keep a candle burning in the window, will you? We'll be back again October the 2nd. <laughs> 